are working in watercolor. I am working on 300 pound. This, I'm not sure if this one was Arches or one of the old Fabriano. I think this was the Arches hot press watercolor paper that I have cut down to a five by seven. So it's super, super thick. Now you'll notice that I've got this started. Don't worry, I recorded it. We're gonna talk through how I got to this point of the painting. But I needed to start here because there is no way, I needed to work flat and then the time of drying it to get the look I wanted, I wanted to get this type of watercolory look. I needed to be able to do that separately. So this is the PH, or Dr. PH Martin's Frisket, their liquid frisket. Um, or, or they call it Frisket Matte Liquid because let's just put all the words out of order. This is the same brand that I use their Bleed Proof White with watercolor that I like so much. This has by far been my favorite masking fluid that I've used. I normally use Winsor & Newton, they're my next favorite. I used, there was another one that I used, I have it over here somewhere and I hate it. It dried up so fast in the, in the bottle. So this one so far, I'm gonna go with that being my favorite right now as far as liquid friskets go. For liquid friskets or masking fluid is a little bit of a pain to work with. When you, you can use a brush to paint it on, but it starts to dry. And I've done the whole thing with the dish soap to make it not stick to the bristles so much and then you can clean it. It's still kind of a pain. I only use a paintbrush when I'm working with frisket and I'm gonna show you the whole process of using it in just a moment here. I only use a brush with that if it's like a fluffy edge where I want the feathers or the fur to really mat stick out more here, not really the case. So what I prefer to do is something like this, where I, it's actually one of my soft tools just without the cover, this worked great. Um, anything like that, I've used these guys, the stylus, um, I've used those for just kind of spreading around the masking fluid in a small area, those work well. Few tips with masking fluid. You don't wanna leave it on. Let's say I put it on tonight and I'm painting and I'm painting and then I'm gonna paint tomorrow and the masking fluid's still sitting. There. Don't leave that on for too long. The longer that sits, the le it, it doesn't like to leave the paper. It, it starts to cause some weird issues. The other thing with masking fluid, I don't like, let's say I'm new, working on something really large. I'm not a huge fan of masking fluid on large areas because it's going to warp paper just like the paint will. And I find that I actually have a bigger problem with masking fluid warping paper than I do the, the actual watercolor or water. So just a few things, um, it, to keep in mind with masking fluid, plus it would be expensive to use large because obviously tiny little bottle. Now removing the masking fluid, again, you don't wanna leave it on there for days at a time. Kind of like when you, we put the tape on the edge. Ideally, we don't wanna leave that on there for weeks or months, the longer that stays, the harder it's going to be to remove. All the supplies I'm using are in the video description. We've got a little rubber guy that this is amazing for removing masking fluid instead of sitting there trying to pick it off with your fingers. These are a must. That is what we're starting with is the masking fluid. Now I am working flat just cause it's easier with watercolor. Tonight I'll be working upright at an easel cause that's what my back likes, but for the background, this was done flat. Okay, so I'm just going to open it up in this specific one. It has like a little dropper in it. And it's basically like rubber when it dries. So I'm just going to spread some of that onto the paper, onto the bird and the branch. Those, these are the areas that I want to protect. What's going to happen is once that dries, I can paint watercolor all over, go right over it. I don't have to worry about messing up my bird because it's completely protected from the paint. Now you do need to make sure that you cover everything. You don't want any little gaps, little holes. I do this all the time where there's like one little spot that gets missed because then the watercolor ends up filling that spot. So you have this dark spot there, but there we go. Um, I'm just, see how I'm just turning this to the side and I'm going to fill it in. I'm painting like I would paint with a palette knife. And it's a little bit awkward. I'm just gonna put a little bit more in there. Now this dropper isn't the kind, like it has a squeezy top, but the bottom is sealed closed. There's no like, it's not sucking, it's not like a normal pipette where it's sucking the product into the tube. It's just kind of dip it in and, and spread it out. We're going to just spread that everywhere here. Now, of course, if you don't have masking fluid, you can just paint around your subject. It's just a little bit hard. Now it is easier if, let's say I didn't have masking fluid, what would I do instead? I would get the entire background wet. I would paint all around the bird so it was just water. And then I would paint the wet areas and it'll mostly stay wherever the paint is current or the, the, can't, the paper was wet already. Just filling that in nice and solid.
You can see it's a, it's a bit time consuming and then you have to wait for it to dry. So I don't know if you're supposed to use a hairdryer on it. I always do and it's always fine. So once I get that filled in, that will speed things along, but I'm also gonna let it cool and set for a bit. I let probably let it set for half hour before I came back and painted over it. And I drew this on here with a 4H pencil, just a normal graphite pencil. It's as much easier if you turn to the side as you work. It was a little bit difficult being that the camera was like right over where I was trying to do this. And there are masking fluids. Winsor & Newton makes one that has a yellow tint to it. I like that because it's very easy to see where you've put it on your white paper. The downside is sometimes that yellow does stain the paper. Usually it's not enough that it really matters once you go over it with your paint, but it is something to keep in mind. We'll fill in that branch. Now the reference photo is also linked in the video description. So if you wanna get that photo, both my mock-up with the copper look that we're going to be using tonight, which is fun. We're going to be using a product called Aqua Bronze. I've got the copper version. And so it's a metallic type watercolor paint, which I'm really excited about. I haven't tried it yet. So it just came in the mail today. I've tried, well, I did a quick sample with the silver. I've not actually used either in a project. So that will be fun. And one last portion of the branch. So having pre-done this, this ended up being about, so oh gosh, under 10 minutes of video, but it probably took me an hour. So you can see why I didn't do this portion live, mainly because of the dry time. It's not that it's, it's a lot of painting done, it's just letting it dry. Okay, so it's completely dry. That's what it looks like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the paper wet. And this is distilled water. This is important. I am using distilled water. I've got my little jars of distilled, one for rinsing the brush and one for loading the brush so that I don't make mud. But you wanna use distilled water because our tap water has all kinds of, we've got fluoride, we've got all kinds of chemicals, uh, chlorine, chloramine, all kinds of stuff that could make your work not archival long-term. So. Go with distilled water whenever you're using, let's say you're using ink tents, uh, water soluble graphite, watercolor, anything like that where you're using water on paper, I always go with distilled water. Now acrylics, they're, they're tough. Acrylics I don't really worry about, but when it comes to on paper like this, that I wanna go with distilled. So I'm using a combination of phthalo green and what was the other color? Do I have it out here? I don't know where they went. Phthalo green, um, it was like a sea something color. Is it this one? No, that's phthalo green. Here it is, it is deep sea green. So those are the two colors here. So I'm gonna get a base layer. And I've mixed them in my little ceramic palette. That's just one of these guys. These are the watercolors, um, they're Schmincke, and they come in these tubes, um, little guys there. It's actually how I made my own uh, watercolor pans. I'm gonna throw some more on there. Remember the lighter you want it to be, just use more water. You're gonna let the white of the paper show through. Now, I wanted to get a lot of texture, but I also wanted a lot of color saturation, so that's why I'm gonna do this in a couple of layers. I tried to record, oh here, I'm getting it wet. I actually went over it with a fine mist sprayer so I could make it run a little bit more. Now notice that the water or the watercolor as it gets on the bird, it's just beating up, that's the masking fluid. It's like a rubber seal over it. it that paper is gonna be completely white when I lift that. Now all this water, if I was using my usual 140 pound paper, this paper would be insanely warped at this point. And it did warp some, but it dried back. Like the, 
it's completely flat once it dried because this is such a thick paper at 300 pounds. The 300 pounds does cost a lot more though. So, you know, you've got some give and take there. Another thing is 300 pounds is so thick, you are not gonna be tracing on that. Like I usually will stick my, my work over my line drawing on my computer and just use the monitor to trace on to get clean lines. Yeah, that's not gonna happen here. So I dried that and we're gonna do it again. I think I did three layers. I only recorded two of them if I remember correctly. You can see the, the real difference there between that sea, deep sea green, I think it was, and the phalo green. Yeah, I was really happy too with the masking fluid on this. It didn't pull up that much of the graphite lines. Some mass, Windsor & Newton removes a lot of my graphite lines. Um, and I don't know, maybe it was a graphite pencil I used. Maybe it was, I, maybe it was a paper, I don't know. But this one I, is definitely like, when I go to buy more, this is for sure gonna be what I get. Now the Windsor & Newton bottles are bigger, but it always dries out really bad. Um, like you don't necessarily want a big bottle because as the air hits it, it dries out faster. So unless you're using a lot of it, that's not even beneficial. And I'm not sure what the prices are on those. So you'll have to look them up. Links are in the video description. Actually, I may not have put the link for the Dr. P.H. Martin's brisket. I'm gonna have to fix all my links when I edit this. Because normally I use, now I'm just sopping some of this up with a regular like bounty paper towel where it got a little bit heavy. And again, I want those lines. You can see some of these harsher like lines in there. I want those to be there. I'm trying to create a little bit more texture. And these are Schmincke, so very pigmented paints. Taking a pipette and just some distilled water, I wanna create a little bit more. I'm trying to get the paint to push out and create those heavy rings, heavy edges. Not so much on this side because, well, yeah, this side. Um, not so much on that side because that's going to be covered with more of my, if it all goes well, my aqua bronze metallic paint, but on the other side where it's gonna be exposed, I really wanted to make sure I had a few, this side here, I wanted some of the, that texture. So just by touching the paper towel, it'll just kind of soak into it. So I don't have to like touch the whole paper towel to everything, just one little area and the paint will just, well, the water will suck right into that one spot. Now make sure when you're buying your watercolors, check because they're not all light fast. All the colors I own, except for one, I screwed up. It was an indigo blue. Like I have actually have my little color chart over here. One of them is not light fast. I missed that when I was buying them. But when you buy them individually, you can check and make sure. Okay, so it's all dry. I'm just taking, see this little rubber guy? It is amazing. And it just lifts, it grabs onto the frisket. It's a miracle. And I'm just gonna pull that off. Once you get it started, most, most of the time it pulls off. This one pulled off easier than, than I have often seen with Frisco. I am so happy with the results. Oh, good, that's still working. I got with that Frisket. So definitely my favorite. Windsor & Newton would be second. And the one, who's the other brand? I think it's over here. I should find it so I can tell you which one I don't like. Because there is one I very much dislike. So now let's go ahead and get started on this chickadee. So the reference photo again, linked in the video description. And that reference photo comes from Unsplash, so you are, it's royalty free. You're good to use it in your own artwork. Now let's pick some brushes. I'm gonna go with something fairly small. This one is a Winsor & Newton Series 7. That'll work. And I'm going to start with my lighter color. So I've got black, but I want it to be fairly light. I wanna show you guys this. this is a must for me with watercolor because when you look at the dried pans, they all kind of look the same when you get into the darker ones. This has my star rating, so I know how light fast they are, like that one right there, two stars, not light fast. Um, but when I come down here, this is especially helpful so I can see which color I want, which is this one here on the end. This guy all by himself. So I'm not going with my darkest darks yet. I will do that what, like after. This is just my base color. Remember with the watercolor, you wanna start lighter and build to your darker values. It is much easier to make something darker than lighter. I 
And then where it starts getting a little bit, see how the water is building there? I'm just gonna touch it. I just dried off my brush. I tapped it on a paper towel and I'm just gonna touch it and it will suck that water up so it doesn't run. I'm gonna do the same thing with the beak. Let's get a base layer in there, especially on the bottom. The upper part is a lot lighter, so that will be mostly just water. A little bit of paint there to tint it, but not much. Now, if you have the option, painting flat with watercolor, so much easier. And actually you get different effects that you can't really get working upright. So that is definitely what I would recommend. Um, but if you are like me and your back and neck doesn't allow for that, that doesn't mean you can't have fun and can't make pretty things. You're just gonna be a little bit more challenging for us. I'm working the brush in the direction of the feathers in case I have brush strokes, but mostly this is just gonna be solid for now. Now, one of the things I found with the metallic paint, I did a quick test the other night with the silver. I was actually kind of surprised because you open it and it's dry powder. I wasn't expecting that. I thought mine went bad because I haven't used, I bought it a couple of years ago and never used it. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, mine, obviously it just went bad. I waited too long. No, it actually is supposed to be that way. And it kind of makes a mess when you open it. Now, uh, if you, you, if you do crafts, you know that glitter is known as the herpes of the craft world. Like it never goes away. You will always have it everywhere. TMI. Um, but that I kind of felt that way with the metallic paint. Well, it's not glittery. It is shiny, but it's like, it's actually got metal, metal, I guess, pigment in there. But the thing that I found with that is that in the water, when I rinse my brushes, the glitter kind of stay, or not the glitter, but the shiny metallic look kind of stays. So I'm not going to even touch that stuff till I've got everything put away. And that is the only thing I'm working on because of, as I rinse my brush, it's going to end up in my water. It's going to end up on everything. And so I'll have metallic maybe where I don't want it or a little bit of shine. It's not a lot, but again, it's kind of like glitter where it just, it's everywhere. So just be aware of that. I'm just kind of putting in, mapping out where these darker areas go, the little tiny bird toes. I had to count how many toes they had really quick up there. There's three, spoiler alert. I'm just getting the hint of definition. Now, as I go into his eye, I do not want to fill in where that shine is. I'm going to leave that. Now, worst case scenario, let's say I get a little crazy and I go too much where the shine is. I've got my PH Martin doctor something, something white, wherever it is, bleed proof white. Um, those words are not in the right order. I don't even know what order they go in. But I've got that. So I can put the highlight back over it. And if I can avoid it, I would rather not have to. So try to leave the white highlight showing. Like don't fill that in with the black. Okay, I'm gonna start filling in some of the darker areas. Now, watercolor is great because using these small, like it's the easiest medium to get teeny tiny fine lines, little details with. Take advantage of that. If you are somebody who likes detail, I love that about watercolor. I'm gonna leave mine a little bit blotchy. If you look at my sample, my mock-up, I've got a very blotchy look to it that I loved for this. So that's what I'm going for, not, I mean, it's somewhat realistic. We're gonna see some of the feathers, but I really want that softer look. Let me know if this camera freezes up. I've been having problems with it again. We've got dark in here. See how I'm really paying attention. Don't, don't overdo with, go with the black here. Don't overgo with, that's, it's a good thing you're not here for grammar because I am failing at it. I can paint, I can't talk well. I can talk fast. I know, people complain about it all the time on YouTube. Let's get 
that shadow again right under here. Dart frogs are starting up. They will serenade us tonight. I don't know if you can hear them in the background yet. Um, let's get a little bit more water here. I want to soften that a bit. Okay, now I want to move into this tannish tone here. Let's see what colors. I'm going to use two on the end. So I've got number 671 and number 663. I can't tell you what they are, but they're these two colors. That does not look like that. Nope, that's why, because I've got it upside down. These two colors here, so I've got kind of a more burnt umber looking color, or I'm sorry, raw umber looking, and I don't know that that's what that is. It just looks kind of raw umber. And then this darker than raw sienna color. <laughs> I'm just going to make up terms. Why won't someone hire me to name things? Burnt sienna looking. I think it's perfect. Or raw sienna, whatever. Okay. I'm going to actually pull this over here so you can see me mixing the color a little bit at first. So, and I'm still using the same brush. This is just a number three round. I find with watercolor, I ended up using like one or two brushes for the whole project. I don't know how much of that I can say is sheer laziness. And how much is, is that even showing, kind of? Um, I'm using the back of this to mix my color. I'm actually mixing it in with some of that reddish brown that's in there. I don't care if that color is perfect, good enough. But that is what's happening. Okay, I showed you. Now I'm bringing it back over here to make my life easier. I probably could just set one of the cameras up over under the easel so you could see. Should have thought that through before the live stream started. Okay, so we've got a lot of white in the chest. I want to leave that. I'm actually going to put a decent amount of water here first. Let's get this wet so it'll blend nicely. Maybe not that wet. So I'm just going to tap some of that water off on my paper towel. Just soak that back up. Now I'm going to start pulling in those tan tones. Oh, I like that. So that combination of my muddy browns, whatever colors those were, worked out nicely. Got a little bit on the wing. And then we're going to pull a little bit over here as well. I want that to soften out, so I'm just going to rinse my brush off using just a little bit of water here. I'm going to let that fade in. Now I need a bit of a grayish tone. It actually has a little bit of blue. I'm going to mix a little bit of my phthalo, like the blues that I used for the background. I'm just going to mix a little bit of that in with a little bit of my black and some water because that is too dark. And pull some of that in here. Remember, when you change your background, pull whatever background color you made into the subject some so he feels like he's a part of the scene. So let's say my background was purple instead. I would want to use purple for some of these shadows. I'm going to rinse my brush, most of it. I'm not rinsing it perfectly clean, most of it off. And then water, I'm going to softly let that fade. I'm going to pull some of those same blue, gray, brown, whatever colors. Seriously, someone should hire me to name these things. A little bit of a highlight there with that blue. I'm gonna pull some of that blue as well over the beak. And now we've got this blue gray, eh, mostly just gray. It's actually kind of a neutral gray. So I'm gonna mix my black with a little bit of brown. And a little bit more water than that. Because that is too dark. And now pulling a little bit more black. And more black. Need a bit more water so that smoke flows smoothly. And then I'll, def I'll get into the details and such later. I'll let that dry before I move on with the details of the feathers. I do want to pull some black in there though. 
Okay, and now we need to get the base on the tail and the branch, and then we can start in with our details. So the same grayish tones. I'm leaving some of that white showing through, although I know I'm going to come back through with my actual white paint. I know that's not very watercolory of me, but then again, neither is the metallic paint, so there we go. I'm going to use a little bit of brown mixed in with some of this just for some variation in there. Okay, and let's get the base on the branch. So same thing, I'm gonna use those same brown, browns that I used on the bird. Oops, I guess I should get that wet first. Now if you ever have used watercolor and you felt overwhelmed and it was hard to control, it is the best medium for mixed medium with colored pencil. Like, I, well, I shouldn't say best because what, um, I also love Pam Pastels. I'm not sure which one I like better. But, oh my gosh, watercolor is a base for colored pencil. Colored pencil sticks on top so well. It's pretty amazing. See, I'm just getting a base layer here and then I will, once that's filled in, I'll go ahead and add some shading. Got some darker brown. There's a little of that black mixed in. I don't even care. I just need it dark because as always, the colors are not that big of a deal. It's your values that matter. Are your darks dark enough, lights light enough? That is what is gonna make your work look realistic. It doesn't matter how much detail you put. If your values suck, so will your painting. Oh, that sounds harsh, but it's true. I always tell this story, but there was a lady who, see, I'm keeping it kind of blotchy and then we'll get a definite shadow right under the bird. There was a lady who did portraits. I don't know if she still, I'd assume she still does. So detailed, like the detail was incredible. She had no darks and no lights. Well, maybe some lights and no darks. Everything was so mid-range, it was very boring to look at. She was very skilled, but she was apparently afraid of getting her dark values in there and it really made her work suffer. She would have gotten so much more attention if she was getting um, those values. Okay, let's paint his little feet. Let's get those with the gray. Actually, I'll put a little bit of blue in there too. Oops, that brush is frayed. Let's fix that. Give him the hint of some toes and then I'll clean that up with details after. Okay, let me dry this and then we can work on the details. So now we're going to start making, focusing on the details and making him look better. So some of this I wanted a little blotchy, but we'll make it better. And I can use the same brush for the details. This is a nice small brush. So I'm going to start with the head. And let's see. I'm going to really mainly focus just with black. And let's start getting these tiny details, tiny little wisps of hair, or hair, fur, the feathers, my gosh, the words, why are they so difficult? Got too much water on there, so I have to dab that, just barely dab it on my paper towel, we'll fix it. Now a lot of this, parts of the bird are going to have that copper going around it, so the edges I'm not super worried about, like perfecting that. Watch the direction of the feathers. Look how they fan out this way. Almost little dots in here. You wanna make sure a lot of that light is showing through. We wanna leave that highlight on the upper section of the head there. Get the hint of the feathers in there. We also wanna darken the eye. And I'm gonna go really dark right around that edge. And then we'll come through here with these darks. 
And you see now why I didn't want to go super dark to begin with, because I, if I go too dark then, I can't get these little details. Let me see if I can. Well, you can kind of see. I'm going to darken again. See, I can build up darker and darker. But if you start too dark, you're, you can't build up. You, you lose the ability to use your darks like this. I could use white to lighten stuff, but it starts to get muddy if you do that too much because of the way that water reactive or watercolor reactivates. It just, and, and then, you, I mean, part of the, the beauty of watercolor is the way that it looks, that translucency from having the, um, the white of the paper show through like the way that these are built in layers. So as much as I joke, you know, I use white and I think, think it looks great and whatever. There's a reason that watercolor artists are the ones that end up being more purists on stuff. They're not wrong that it looks better if you can leave the white, if you can master that and let the white of the paper show through, you get such a beautiful look with watercolors. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that you can't make it beautiful while still using the opaque white stuff on top. These little hairs, look how the direction I'm moving that. And if you push harder, you'll get a thicker line using real, a really light hand to keep these nice wispy little lines, which unfortunately don't show up that great on camera. You gotta love webcams. So see how I've got this dark just in this area. And again, I'll show you on the other camera in a moment, but it definitely is a little bit more than what you're seeing there. And I'm not gonna do too much around the edge because again, that copper is gonna go in there. Okay, let's see, what else do we need? We need to come down here. We've got some little wispy feathers. I need a bit more water on my brush. Not that much water. I'm gonna start defining some of these better now. Now, if you look at the reference photo, there are a lot of lines in there for the little, the flight feather lines. I am not gonna fit all those in this size. Like, I'm not even gonna bother with that. I just need to get the hint of that in there. Just throw a few in. I'm not gonna sit there and go, okay, it's 15 lines. I'm not gonna fit 15 lines in there. Going to make some little wisps for the feathers on the back. Now this black is thinned out with a lot of water, but it also has the burnt umber color, whatever color that actually was. Number 663 is mixed in with it. Okay, let's define the tail a bit. A little too much there. Let's add some water and thin that out. You can be dark, you're just gonna be that dark. Calm down. And we've got little butt floof right around the base of the tail. See, why don't they let me name things? Butt floof. Yeah, I'm gonna take a little bit of white. I will put around that edge on some of these feathers that I want to have a brighter look to them. Okay, let's do a little toes. I'm gonna thin that same black out with some water. 
and get the shadows really focusing on the underside of the toe there. Let some of those highlights show through. Basically getting the hint of the feet. I'm not going to put in like every single shadow the same or line the same. This is a little. We just need to get the hint of those little toes. And then I want that shadow to pull down a little bit into the branch. Now in this area, I'm not going to use the straight black. This is going to be more with the browns. Let's get the hint of some of those feathers. And watch the direction. See, like over here, this goes a completely different direction than over there was. Oh, he's already cute. I can't wait to start to try that copper. I don't know how opaque the copper is going to be. The silver was pretty opaque. I'm assuming the copper will be the same. Just want to get the hint. I don't need every little feather in there. You can see how they group in little clusters. I'm going to switch over to the bluish tone that I had mixed earlier. So it's got like the black with the blue mixed together. I need this to be fairly light because I'm going up against the white. I don't want this too dark. Just the hint of feathers again. I'm really excited about how he's coming out already. I like this. I want this. Okay, let's add a little bit of white and I'm going to use, actually I can read it off the thing because I all know I can't get that name right. Um, this is the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. That is just too many words. So I don't know that like it's dry. It's completely dry in there. I just add water and I've read and I don't know who was right on this. I've read people say you're not supposed to thin it with water. Like how do you even use it? I don't know if mine came and was bad or if they're, let me know. Um, are they always like that? I'm just going to let some white right out of there. It works just fine. So I'm not sure why you're not supposed to thin it with water or what that I read was, if that person was right or not. I mean it was the internet so they probably weren't right. Need a little bit more water there. Just where it's the brightest. And then right along here, I'm going to clean that edge up. Again, that's going to have copper, so not a ton of work needs to be cleaned up there just a little. Oh, he's so cute. And I want to get a little bit of a deeper shadow in here. So I'm going to rinse my brush off and dry this and then pull a little bit more for that contrast. Um, okay. So let's get some of, oh, I need this back over here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's do a little bit of blue with the brown. Kind of a muddy color there, but it's a muddy color with the colors I already had. So it's supposed to be this way. If you, one of the things that you can do too, if you struggle with creating mud in your paintings or drawings, use less colors. I mean, if I create a muddy mess with three colors, that mud's gonna work. If I'm using every color I own, that is gonna be a rainbow, not cute mess. Using a little bit of blue, a lot of blue. Let's thin that with some more water. There we go.
Okay, I think we get to play with the, I think that's good. We get to play with the copper now, which is good because that's gonna take a little bit to fill all that in. Let's see. So since my palette is pretty full with other colors, I am going to be using a bottle cap for this. So actually we'll do this over here. We'll mix it on this one after I get to eat. Okay. So bottle cap. This stuff is powdery. So I'm gonna use my soft tool, a palette knife would work, something, something little to scoop it out of there with. We're just gonna put some of that right in there. Now this stuff is smudge proof, but it's not waterproof. So like once it's on the paper and it's dry, it's not gonna smudge around or anything like that, but it will reactivate with water. And speaking of, oh, that's not in focus at all. Let's see if I can fix that camera. Okay, there we go. Okay, so. I'm just going to take that brush. Now, remember when I talked about glitter being the herpes of the craft world? Yeah, same thing. So this water now is going to end up having that metallic look to it. So just be aware of that as you're uh, mixing that in. Oh, wow. Look, can you see how shimmery? Like, look at that shine. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. The more water you add, the more translucent it will be, obviously, because watercolor. And this actually has metal pigments in it. They said that it doesn't have like a light fast rating because metallics don't, but it said that it is very light fast. And this is by Schminka. Like that's the brand. It's the Aqua Bronze Schminka. Schminka. Yeah, I think it's Schminka. And this is the copper one. They have gold too. They have three different golds. I have not tried those. They also, and then of course the silver. So I've got silver and copper are the two that I have now. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to mix more of that. Actually, I almost wonder if I need it to be thicker, but let's go ahead and go with that. And let's see how this goes. Now the damask print, the way that I got that on there, I can go over that really quick and show you. I made my own using, like if you have, uh, mine was the Silhouette, um, like Cricut, I think people use those a lot. It's my own damask print. Um, so I just use that to trace, but you can get like, just look on Amazon for damask um, or whatever print you want, swirls, whatever, temple, uh, stencils. So those work really well. But the one I'm using tonight was my own design. I don't know if I added too much water to this. I think I did. Like when I look at the little, here's my sample. Yeah, I think I added too much water, but look at how it shines. That is, wow. Okay, I'm gonna add more though. Let's come on back over here and scoop a bit more in. I want it to be really opaque. Says the person who's never used it before, so she doesn't know what she's doing. I think I want it opaque. I don't know. Okay, that would be too opaque. That is like powdery. Actually, I have a pipette over here that I used earlier. Where is it? Oh, it is lost into the void of my watercolor crap. Okay, let's just keep doing the brush and stirring that in. Someone who's used this before is probably cringing watching me do this. Okay, back to the easel. Let's see how this, this batch works. It looks pretty opaque. Um, I guess just start up here. Ooh, I don't know if you got, oh my gosh, the shimmer on this. It is so metallic. Like that is some, ser oh, this is pretty. I'm excited. I want to, now I drew my lines out with a white charcoal pencil, so I can erase them if I don't fill them in all the way. Actually, the area I'm working on, that is going to be cut off by the mat, but whatever. I need the practice anyway. Is that not gorgeous? Like it's so much better in person too, the shimmer on this. So I, I made the comparison with glitter, but it's not glitter, like glitter's tacky. Like it's for crafts. It's it just, it, it's, it's tacky. 
this is not, this is, this is stunning. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, I'm definitely going to have to make some stuff like this for my own. I need to try the gold ones too. I'm currently obsessed with the combination of gold and teal. But I wanted the more orangey tone of copper for the fall feeling. So that's why I bought this one before I bought the gold. Pro tip, if you go outside the line a little bit, just make sure you go outside the little bit on the, the other side too. Just make it look intentional. Repeat the mistake so it looks like it was on purpose. This seems to be a pretty good mixture of how much water I mixed in with that powder. Like that is really very opaque. That looks so good. Oh my gosh. Look at, like the sh look at how when the light hits it. That is so pretty. My excitement level is super high right now. I don't get out much. And I'm going back and forth on this just to make sure both sides match because I'm not like necessarily completely inside the lines. So if I mess up on one side, I just want to make sure it's messed up, messed up on the other so that they match. Match-ish. Sisters, not twins. I'm using the bottom of my arm on my easel as a mull stick so that I'm not like completely resting my hand on the work. It's on, I'm crossing my arms like this to stabilize it. Glassine would be another option. I mean, I've touched it in a couple of places, but I'm trying to keep my hand off it as much as possible. Wow, that is super opaque too. Oh my gosh, I have so many plans for projects I wanna do with this combination, the watercolor with the, my friend Kinder told me about this stuff when she's the one who got me started with the Shaminka, like insisted that was the best. So, but she had told me to pick this up and said that I would love it and I just never got to it. But with my current teal gold obsession, I decided it'd be fun. It's getting a little bit, let's put a little bit more on there. That was a little too translucent. This is really satisfying. How many of you guys now are gonna go out and get this stuff too? Like this is, I'm so impressed. Now I really want all the colors. I think it's two different, or no, three different types of gold, bronze and silver were available. Probably should have just bought the whole set. Although I wouldn't have had it here on time for the video. I decided I wanted this on Monday, I think. Luckily, Amazon came through and had it to me today. I was a little bit concerned about what I would do if it wasn't here. Okay, wait, which one are you? You, you, I'm completely missing a pattern there, but I need this to dry so I can use my stencil again because I'm not even going to try to get that right without it. It's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. What other projects can I go back over and add this to?
It seems to be staying wet a decent amount of time in the cup too. Like um, when I use the Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture for colored pencil highlights, the brush and pencil product, that stuff dries really, really fast. This is staying wet pretty long. I mean, I guess that makes sense. One's colored pencil, one's watercolor. But it just made me think of it because I do both in these little bottle caps. And this whole area over here gets mostly cut off, but some of it will show. So I'm going to paint it all in just so I can straighten it with the mat and not worry about not having it completely covered. Like if I have to turn, sometimes the mat will, like when I put the artwork in the mat, the artwork isn't necessarily straight by the edge. I need to make it straight by the artwork itself. So that's why I need to go all the way off so I can turn it as needed. The shimmer on this is like, it is better than I hoped. I mean, I did that little swatch test, like this was the, ex wait, where's my paper? I have a scratch piece over here. Oh, I don't know where it was. It was like three little lines with the, the silver just to test it um, on Monday because to see how opaque that one was. So I really wasn't sure what to expect with this over actual like watercolor. God, there are so many possibilities for this too with using more water and letting this run. Like, this is so cool. I'm gonna recommend whoever buys this, as always, always, what, um, uh, UV protecting glass is always ideal. Never ever hang your artwork so that it's getting hit by direct sunlight, no matter how light fast the color is. Like those light fast readings are based on what you, you, you. They're based on, um, they call it museum, like museum conditions or something like that. Basically not in direct light. A little tedious, totally worth it though. Yeah, with the metallics, even with the metallic gold paint that I use with Liquitex Basics, I love that color. They have a silver one too. Um, I think there's a pearl one. I contacted them about that and they basically were like, we can't say it's light fast because you can't really light fast. It's not the same. The pigment, metallics versus pigment, like it's just not the same. But they said that their team is pretty confident in how, like its longevity is supposed to be pretty good. Oh, I didn't finish doing shadows on the branch. Oh, we'll come back to that. Actually, yeah, no, I do want to make a little bit more shadows on it. Now, I don't know if all metallics would be considered archival or light fast. I'm just going by what the company said about this one and what I've heard from Liquitex. And I appreciated that with Liquitex, that they were very honest about that. They weren't just like, Sure, for sure, it's 100%. They like explained what, why they felt the way they did about it, which was cool. Um, I need a little bit more water. I may have to load this up again. Maybe. I don't wanna to add too much water though. I really like the opacity I'm getting. But my brush is starting to dry out. See if that's too much water, it might be. I don't know, I think we're okay. I think this all gets cut off by the mat anyway, but. Yeah, I need a little bit more. I'm gonna need more anyway for outlining portions of the bird. So I may as well get that now. I 
I don't think I need a lot, eh, maybe a little bit more. Now this stuff, when I got the silver, when I didn't realize it was powder and I got it all over the side of my hand, it, even when I washed it, it stayed, like it was on my hand. Um, it came off mostly, but it almost looked like if you took a shimmery eyeshadow and smudged it on your hand, that's kind of what it looked like after I washed it off. So, like it came off all the way in the shower, but when I tried just washing my hands in the sink, I definitely had a little bit of a tint to it. Oh, I put too much water. Okay, let's get some more. That's gonna take me a little bit of getting used to how much water versus how much of the powder. I apparently suck at making that determination. That looks better. Yeah, just go back over the areas that were a little too translucent. Okay, now I am going to dry this and fix, I need to redo the branch, or darken up some areas on the branch. It's really easy to control. I shouldn't say that, because that's almost guaranteed that I'm gonna screw something up majorly. I'm just taking the brown-black mixture that I used before. I just wanna get a, a little bit of extra shading on the branch. I don't need to go crazy, I just want it to have some form. Right now it's like really flat. That'll do. Okay. And let me dry that and I'm gonna go around the rest of the bird with a copper and he will be done. I can't wait to show you in the big camera cause oh my gosh, like in person, wow, this, oh, come on, I'm spilling water all over the place. Um, okay. okay. Now I wanna do a little bit of copper. I'm using that same brush. Well, I used the same brush through the whole painting minus the branch just cause I didn't wanna get the metallic all over. Let's use my sample. I'm so excited about this. Like, gosh, there are, I'm, you guys are gonna be seeing me use this stuff all the time now. Like, this is just so pretty. I've been on, like, I, I know I keep saying that, I've been on that gold kick. Anyway, so, it seems like a much easier way than the gold foil, which is gorgeous. I love the look of that in art, but ooh, way easier. You know, just paint it on. I'm just painting a few little details. Like I'm not outlining everything. A little bit on the branch right on the edge. And the nice thing is if your edges aren't perfectly, like you had issues with them, this is gonna clean that right up. But I don't want everything outlined either. Like I, I'm definitely going a little bit more sparingly. I tested this, I did a digital painting of this too, well sort of, digital slash photo, uh, Photoshop mockup, but to test where I wanted the highlights or the copper additions. So I was able to find that out before. That is about it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Let's pull this over here so you can see him. Look at the shimmer. Look at how when the light hits it, like it's so pretty. The way, well, it, looks, it still looks better in person. Like this is kind of hard to show you. I'm trying to get to where you can really see the way that shimmer hits.
paint drop, you don't have any experience, or your drawing skills aren't that good, join over 1,100 students and follow along with over 300 painting and drawing lessons. There are over 675 hours worth of lessons and new ones every week, just waiting to turn you into a master. The great thing about these classes are that you get to do them from your own home in your own time. If you're taking in-person classes, often it's very hard where you're either falling behind, you're trying to rush to keep up with other students, or you're working faster than the other students waiting for them to catch up to you. With my classes, there is no time limit. You can work at your own pace, whatever feels comfortable for you. 